Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's working. Um, um, it's 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 great to be here at the beginning of another festival. It's always an exciting event, and I think the panel we have tonight is as exciting as you can get. Um, um, I mean, I mean, Peter's been talking about the diversity of nations attending attending this event. Well, I mean, I mean, um, we have we have a Pakistani writer who lives in Canada, an American writer who lives in New, Z New Zealand, stretching right across the other ends of the world, and even in China, a Shanghai writer who lives in Beijing. So, 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 so I mean, the, apart from the ideas expressed, they come from a, a very wide range. Now, but, but all of the writers who will be talking tonight have, have one thing in common, which is a love of the word, and the craftsmanship of the word, and I think when you read their books, you'll find the descriptions of totally different scenes, mountains in America, an old old town in in in, in Pakistan, um, modern the under the underclass of Chinese, but the description, the words, the images which remain from which remain with you after reading these books are the works of true artists and better to start this festival now and we're, we're starting the festival with with a with a um, with a question which is something I'm sure most writers ask themselves but I mean, why on earth do we write I mean writing I tell you I mean I've done a bit it's solitary you have to sit time you've got to force yourself to sit down and and, and actually do the writing without with just making another cup of coffee and why not look at the internet and um, oh dear it's time for lunch and, um, and the day goes by because it's hard work you have to move your mind to a mental space which is not your own and at the end of the day you when you finally produce your work you hand it over to the criticism of the world and then it starts another creative process starts all over again and at the end of the day it all comes out and there's fame for a while, but then you have to get the next book out as well. Why do it? So let's start off asking that question from three very successful, well-known writers. Why do they put themselves through all this hassle when, 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 you know, you could just join a merchant bank and make a billion. So I mean, what, what, is, the, what is the thing? And so, and so, I, so I'm going to ask this question, David. Why, 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 why are you a writer? What impelled you to write, and what, and what encourages you to continue? And I'm going to ask the same question all around. So, <laughs> um, well, thanks. Uh, first of all, is this, is this now? Okay. <laughs> um, it might be too loud. Is that okay? No. Can you it's off. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Um, so, uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. I'm, I'm really excited to come to China for the first time in my life. I've been wanting to come for years. So, uh, it's been great uh, just being a tourist around Beijing yesterday and today. Um, so, uh, I started writing when I was a kid. I, I wrote all of our hunting and fishing tales in Alaska. And they were basically stories of how we almost died during that year because of my father's adventures at sea and on rivers. He would take us um, rafting down a class five river right after a storm, and uh, we'd smack into waves and flood and bash into every rock all the way down the river, and he'd almost kill three generations of us. <laughs> and so my tales had titles like North to Alaska, and they were illustrated and laminated pages and given out as Christmas presents at the end of the year. And so I always knew I wanted to write, and my family encouraged me to write also, especially my grandmother. She didn't know that I would end up writing about her son's suicide, my father's suicide. So she became less supportive uh, <laughs> later when the material changed. I, I, I do think that, that a writer is the worst thing that can happen to a family. <laughs> it's a, I mean, just think about it. It's all of your shame exposed out there for everyone to read in 20 languages and they don't even, the writers don't even tell the truth you know it's been transformed into monstrous shape so i i think a better question would be why would any family allow there to be a writer 
they're the ones who suffer. Um, but uh, for me, writing has been um, wonderful, and, and uh, it's the most engaging thing I've done in my life, and really the only thing I actually care about, and it's what is the center of every day for me. And everything that I thought writing was changed um, after about almost 10 years of working on my first book, Legend of a Suicide. I thought that writing was about control, having an outline and a plan and knowing what the book was going to be about. And I was trying to write about my father's suicide. And I wrote uh, the novella, which is in Legend of a Suicide. I was halfway through that novella. And I'm, I'm going to have to do a spoiler here and say something that happens in the book, um, because otherwise I just can't even talk about it. So sorry about that if you haven't read it and you want to read it. I, I, I swear it's still worthwhile to read it, even if you know this. But um, the big surprise for me was that I thought that this, this short novel, this novella, would end with my father's suicide. That I would get closer to his despair, his last moments, that I would understand him, and that was the purpose of it. But halfway through, the boy ends up killing himself. The, the father and son are homesteading on an island in Alaska, and uh, the boy ends up killing himself, not the father. This was very disturbing for me because it meant my whole plan was destroyed. So the next day, I planned to cut that moment and continue on with my plan. Uh, but I reread all the pages leading up to them, and I could see those pages as if someone else had written them. It's like I saw them, uh, I could see what writing was for the first time. I could see all this pattern and this pressure leading to that moment. And I, I hadn't seen the moment coming until I was halfway through writing the sentence. I mean, it was really in the second half of the sentence before I saw that the boy would just put the pistol to his head and kill himself. Um, so this changed forever what I thought about writing. I saw that there's actually a lot of pattern to the unconscious mind. That, that this moment freed my writing in a way that my plans never could. Because after the boy does that, I could finally write about the things that I never could before. I was able to write about what it was like to discover his body, and I'd never been able to write about what my father's body might be like. I was able to talk about what it's like after finding out someone's killed themselves, and I could never write about my grief directly. It was, it was too emotional, and I didn't have any distance on it. So this is a, an unconscious transformation that happened. It was a real thing that happened on the page. It wasn't fake. It, it was my unconscious changing things, changing the shape of things, so that a story could be told. And that has been my experience ever since in writing. And that's exactly why I write every day, is to experience that contact with the unconscious and to experience those sorts of transformations. So every day when I write, it's one hour of reading the previous 20 or 30 pages of the novel, and it's a kind of meditation. My mind's going 16 ways and I'm trying to focus. And then I'm convinced I'll never write again. <coughs> I have a moment, I think there is no next page, <laughs> but then I read through the last couple of pages and come back to it, and then I write a, a paragraph, usually comes out pretty quickly. I keep just rereading the past pages, and I don't have any idea what will happen between the characters. I, what I do is I just focus on the landscape. The landscape acts as a kind of Rorschach test, like an inkblot drawing, where you can't help but make pattern. You know, our minds are pattern makers. So if you see the inkblot drawing, you'll, you'll find some shape in it. And if I look at landscape, at forest or water, I inevitably find some shape to it, and it ends up changing um, and indicating the inside life of the characters. And so the story will come out of that. And so in that next hour, I end up writing my new page. I'm surprised to find out what happened. And I hope that there's a little bit of craziness that happened and that I offer to the reader. That landscape has shifted, like when Irene in my novel Caribou Island is running through the forest on an island, she feels that the island is top heavy with the, all the rocks and trees, and that the whole island is going to turn over and the underside will be exposed. And that's a moment where the landscape um, becomes not just description, but becomes something that, that changes shape and shows the inside life, the mindset, the character. So, There'll be some moment like that every page, or a conflict between characters. They'll say something surprising in their conflict with each other. Um, so that's why I write, is to come into contact with that. Because my experience is that in all of these ugly family stories, I come from a family with five suicides and a murder. So it was really perfect for a writer. I couldn't have asked for better. 
and it was in beautiful landscapes of Alaska and Northern California. And my experience is that these ugly family stories are transformed into some other shape. It, it, I have a second chance. The ugly can become the beautiful. And, and that's really why I do it, for that kind of transformation. The ugly can become the beautiful redemption. You don't know what's going to happen next. I think that's great. Thank you. Okay.